tonight. How can we protect young people from harmful activity on social media? A York student has told BBC Look North that his addiction to certain smartphone apps became so severe it led to him trying to take his own life. Danny Bowman spent hours on his phone taking hundreds of selfies a day to upload onto social networking sites. Today, the government has published long-awaited plans to try to protect vulnerable users. Maxime McGopal has this report. Danny Bowman was 15 when he became addicted to social media, a dependency that led to him trying to kill himself. I was spending up to six, seven, eight hours a day just scrolling through social media, um, looking at other people, uh, looking sort of really how perfect their lives were, um, you know, how perfect they looked. And I thought, why can't I be like that? You know, there's something wrong with me. In search of online validation, he became obsessed with posting the perfect selfie, taking hundreds of photos a day. Every time I got a like, it felt amazing, um, you know, euphoric, it felt incredible. You know, people think I look okay, that's how I registered it. Um, and then when I got a negative comment, it was like the end of the world, and I took it very personally. It got to the point where I tried to take my own life, um, because it really was that severe. Danny was diagnosed with body dysmorphic disorder. He believes social media played a big part. Over several weeks at an addiction treatment centre, he was weaned off his smartphone. Taking my phone away for 10 minutes at a time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, had a, a major effect on, on you know, um, how I saw social media, but also a really good effect on my mental health. The issue has been the subject of a cross-party inquiry. A group of MPs are calling for urgent research into how social media can affect young people, whether it can cause mental health issues or whether it's just correlation. They want to see if it's addictive enough to be classified as a disease and want a levy on social media companies to help pay for the research. It is incredibly worrying for parents. I have two daughters and I know the amount of time that they spend on social media and how they can feel elated when they get likes and shares. I'm not saying that we shouldn't applaud the ability to share ideas and creativity, but the darker side to that is really something that the government and media giants uh, should look at because at the moment it's the Wild West. There is no regulation um, and there's no obligation for the media giants to actually do something. But that could soon change. Today's long-awaited government white paper sets out proposals for regulating harmful online activity. However, one charity says the plans aren't moving fast enough. It wants tech giants and other groups to act now and create a clear guide for social media use. It's absolutely vital that we do something now rather than wait for legislation to come into place. This can be a timely process and we cannot wait around while potentially more lives are lost due to you know, social media platforms and the impact they can have on our young people's mental health and well-being. Danny still uses social media for the mental health campaigning he does alongside university, but he has a more balanced relationship with it now and hopes the government's proposals will help ensure other young people have the same. Well, Luxmi's here with us now. Uh, Luxmi, how common a problem is social media addiction and should we be worried? Well, Phil, for many of us, social media is the first thing we look at when we wake up in the morning and it's the last thing we look, look at when we go to bed at night, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And for some people, that's as far as it goes. But the government's white paper today says that there's a wide ranging group of people for whom it's more compulsive than that. And there are particularly vulnerable cases where social media takes over their life, as you saw with, with Danny there. But the trouble is, it's hard to quantify how many people are affected in this way because the government says there hasn't been a reliable way of measuring that yet. But one thing it did say today is that it's worried about the built-in addictiveness of social media apps. So, for example, even just getting likes keeps you online for longer. And the infinite scroll, that's where, say, if you're on Facebook or Twitter, you keep scrolling on your phone and it just keeps going. And the government says that that makes addictive behaviour worse. So it looks to me, what's the government going to do about it? Well, it wants research into the built-in addictiveness of social media apps and it wants an independent regulator to oversee it and to write a code of practice for social media companies. Now, this is a huge piece of work that covers all sorts of online activity, but one of the key messages coming out of it today was that social media companies have to protect the people that they profit from. They have a moral duty to protect people, in particular young people. Looks me, thank you so much.